Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of the Four Lads of the Dream podcast. My name is Stephen Clifford and I am your host. Joining us tonight as usual co-host, he is the Chief Sports Writer over at the Herald and Glasgow Times Group, Mr Chris Jack. Chris, how are you? Very well, Stevie. Thanks for uh, thanks for asking. Thanks for having us on. Uh, it feels like a long time since we've since we've done one of these, so looking forward to uh, getting back into it. Uh, and it's certainly a great name for the uh, uh, to tell the to tell us their, uh, their stories and uh, to reminisce about some really uh, memorable and uh, great times at Rangers. Yeah, without a doubt, um, the, our guest tonight, Arthur Newman, is a legend of the club um, for um, Scottish Cups between '99 and 2003. Uh, three league cuts, um, 99 to 2003, and three Scottish Premier Leagues, two under Dick Advocat and one under Alex McLeish. Um, he twice won the treble, 45 caps for Holland, uh, which is no mean feat, um, and ended his career at Rangers in 2003. Um, Chris, we are talking about one of the best left-backs that's played for Rangers. I think we're talking about, if you go over the last... Okay, 20, 30 years, not just one of the best life backs that played for Rangers, but one of the best players, full stop, that's played for Rangers. Now, you rhymed off his, his achievements there. It's part of such great Rangers sides, uh, but, you know, to have the impact they had on the international stage as well. A really classy left back, a really classy guy, um, you know, somebody that's always been really great to deal with, somebody that had a, a huge affection for the Rangers fans, and somebody I know the Rangers fans have a huge affection for, uh, and rightly so, considering everything. He did for the club and not just how good a player he was for Rangers. Yeah, absolutely. And part of the reason that Arthur is with us tonight is because of a new affiliation that we have with um, Five Stars Limited. Um, Five Stars are events by the players for the fans. Um, Arthur is co-owner um, alongside Graham Clark and Chris Boyd. So we'll, we'll obviously we'll, we'll talk to Arthur a wee bit more about Five Stars. But um, they've had some great nights, the likes of um, Loudrop, Graham Soonis, George Alberts, Michael Moles, even Arthur, Chris Boyd, all these kind of names. Um, we were looking forward to having a few of these guests on. Um, Chris, obviously, we've got Arthur tonight, but then we'll have Chris Boyd um, and, and hopefully a few more in the future as well. Oh, they've they've got some great names on their, on their roster. I've been to a couple of these nights uh, in the past and they're always a really good Really good night. It's always great to hear like, old stories from you know, the guys that played part in such uh, successful sides. Uh, now we've also had a had a few great guests on the podcast, and the guys over at Five Stars have got a great roster as well. So uh, hopefully this this partnership can really uh, work out for both of us, and uh, really grateful for uh, Five Stars for asking us to come on board. Absolutely. So without any further ado, um, let's speak to Arthur himself. Um, as we said, Arthur, a huge name in in Rangers history two-time treble winner, a regular fixture in the, the Holland team. Welcome to the podcast, Mr Arthur Newman. Hello, everybody. There we are. Arthur, thanks very much for joining myself and Chris. It's a real privilege to speak to you. Um, as we said, we've, we've given you the big build-up. Ten honours at Rangers, 45 caps for Holland. Uh, myself and Chris have both said you're one of the finest left-backs we've seen for Rangers. Can you tell us a wee bit about 1998 when you first came to the club and your memories of that season, a hugely successful season? It was like a revolution of, of under Advocat and, yeah. and Rangers just started so well. Talk us through that year. Yeah, no, you're, uh, you're spot on. It was like uh, the end of like a very successful uh, team under Walter Smith in the nine in a row. When, uh, when Advocat took over, he wanted to build a new team. And uh, to be honest, I signed for Rangers in uh, in March '98, but I had no idea about yeah the club, uh, the size of the club, uh, what it actually meant to go to Scotland and, and to play for Glasgow Rangers. And uh, but yeah, you can only experience it yourself once when you arrive there, and then you think, whoa, this is a big difference compared to Holland. Of course, in Holland, football is very popular. You have big clubs, Ajax, Feyenoord, PSV, but when you come to Scotland, oh. It's, it's like a big step. Uh, you notice that already when you arrive with the papers, uh, the daily record, this and that, everything. Every paper, they had 10 pages every day about Rangers or Celtic. And, uh, and also the moment when you arrive and you go to Ibrox and you walk through the, through, the, through the main door and you see the marble stairs, you think, whoa, you know, this is like history. Fantastic. And I thought to myself, so, nice stadium, uh, capacity of 50,000. And I'm still surprised in those five years when I played for Rangers, that every time we played there, it was sold out. It was amazing, the, the, the atmosphere. 
But you can imagine, um, I signed for Rangers 98. I played for PSV Eindhoven. I went straight to the World Cup. Uh, I've been there, I think, probably for six, seven weeks together with the national team. Yeah, we reached the semi-final. Unfortunately, we lost uh, against Brazil. So I only had a wee break for 10 days. And then all of a sudden, uh, when I was uh, on holiday, Advocati called me, Oliver, I want you actually to pack your stuff and come to, uh, to Scotland. But I said, Kaffer, I'm only here for 10 days on holiday. I don't care. Because it was the game we played against Shelbourne away. And I think everybody still remember that probably, that uh, half time we were teamed down. And, uh, and I remember I was lying by the pool and I, and I called my dad. I said, can you check the half time score? And he said, yes, yes, of course. And he said, 3 0 for Shelbourne. I said, are you kidding me on? I said, I no, he said 3 0 for Shelbourne. Eventually, we won the game 5 3, but Advocat was panicking and he wanted me actually to come as quick as possible to Scotland. And I said, The cover, I said, I arrive on a Sunday. I said, The game is on a Wednesday. I can only tra train two days. He said, I don't care, you're still fit. You're just back from the World Cup. So you can imagine, I arrived there in, uh, in Scotland. Uh, I introduced myself to everybody in the dressing room. The team has been uh, together already for four or five weeks. So I was the last person to arrive. So I trained on a Monday and a Tuesday, and then I played against Shelbourne. And, I never forget when I was there standing in the tunnel uh, next to Van, Bron uh, Van Broncos was actually uh, standing next to me and I said, whoa, I said, this will be amazing because we could hear the noise. And then the moment when we walked out, then I thought, whoa, 50,000 people in uh, Shelbourne and I got goosebumps and I could feel the adrenaline pumping through my, uh, my body when I looked around me, 50,000 people, very fanatic. And, it was my first game and I never forget it because uh, I think I scored the best goal in my life against Shelburne, but unfortunately it was actually uh, offside. <laughs> but uh, that was, uh, to be honest, it was a great start. And then you realize, well, I signed for a club with the, the, the fans, the, the supporters, so passionate. Uh, yeah, they're behind the team for 90 minutes. They were singing, they were uh, encouraging you. And yeah, that, that was, yeah, my first experience. And I thought, whoa, if this is happening every home game, then amazing and uh, yeah in the beginning we were struggling a little bit because yeah we had a lot of new players i think we had 12 13 14 different nationalities in the dressing room so you can imagine it takes uh, yeah, some time that you actually yeah, learn the players about each other's quality and uh, because in the beginning we were struggling i think we lost against hearts away 2-1 and then of course all of a sudden everybody was uh, was panicking but i said it takes some time eventually we started to play uh, together as a team and the results were better and uh, yeah then uh, yeah the, the first season was very successful because the first trophy we won it was also something i never forget that was uh, the, the it was already the league cup final and i think it was played in october or in november at parkhead and uh, also i was surprised because there were not so many supporters in the in the stadium because they refused to go to parkhead and uh, but it was great because uh, I still see myself as an idiot running there on the, on the park with a with 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 flag and something on my head. And I thought, well, this is what it's all about because I came to Scotland, I came to, uh, to Rangers to win some trophies. And it was such a big relief already to win uh, the first trophy. And then we, uh, we, we, we started to focus on uh, yeah, winning the league and, and, uh, and the cup. And yeah, of course, the first year was very successful because we won the travel. But for me, it was a little bit disappointing because uh, I got injured in uh, December. And I think that has something to do with the season before because I nearly played all the games for PSV Eindhoven in the league uh, in Europe. Then I went straight to the, to the World Cup, uh, seven weeks together. Uh, I, I, was, I was fit, only had a wee break for 10 days, two weeks, and then already, already started with, with Rangers. And then I remember when I actually got a pass, I think, from George, and I tried to control the ball. And then all of a sudden, I twisted my ankle and I thought, oh, it's a little bit sore. And uh, I didn't know exactly what was going on. I went to hospital, they couldn't actually find it. And then two weeks later, then, yeah, the, I went to hospital for a scan and then I tore all my ligaments. And they said, yeah, uh, you've been out for four or five months. And for me, it was very disappointing because, you know, I was happy to be part of the team, winning already the first uh, title in, um, in October, November. And then, yeah, missed the second part of the, of the league. So it was fantastic to win the treble the first, uh, the first year. But for me, it was a little bit strange because, yeah, I missed the, the second part of, uh, of the league. But to be honest, for everybody, it was great. A new, a new coach, a lot of new players uh, winning the treble. And that's what it's all about because that's what the supporters want to see. So uh, I think a, a fantastic start under Dick Advocaat in the first season. Yeah, it really was. Uh, for us as a sport, it was exciting. Some of the best football 
I've seen. Yeah. Um, and and then we we went into year two under under Dick, and it just went even higher. We had some phenomenal European results. Obviously, playing your old side, PSV home and away. Yeah. Um, we managed to beat Parma, um, yeah. and and things like that. But in the league, we basically steamrolled everyone. Um, and, and finally, with the, the Scottish Cup beating Aberdeen four 0 for the which was uh, the big Dutch day. Everybody was yeah. in orange, and it was a, a phenomenal kind of time. Sum up that second season for us, because again, for you, it would have had some highs and lows and. But at that point, with with guys like Van Bronckhurst and and Alberts and Rod Wallace, you, you yourself at the back, Stefan Klaus, we had some unbelievable names. Yeah. How good was that playing in, in playing with them boys in that team? No, you're you're, you're right. Uh, if you think about the squad we had, it was uh, fantastic uh, because we had such a big squad. I think nearly twenty six players in the dressing room, and I think also the strength of our team was if somebody was injured. We knew that you had a good uh, replacement, and uh, with, with also with some uh, some some quality, and uh, and that made it uh, very interesting for everybody because everybody wanted to play, everybody wanted to be part of the team to win trophies. What you what you just uh, mentioned, and uh, and also the European games. Uh, later, I heard from some players who played for the big teams in, in Europe. They said we were always afraid to go to Scotland to play against Rangers because they said uh, the atmosphere. That is unbelievable, and you can imagine the old firm was special. That was also uh, unbelievable, but also the European games because you can imagine when you're outside, it's dark. You come out of the tunnel, uh, the lights, and then all of a sudden, for 90 minutes, the supporters are there actually to, yeah, to encourage you to go for it and get a result. And but I said a lot of the the players from other clubs have said, "Oh, we were a little bit afraid because the atmosphere at Ibrox is unbelievable." And and then I'm talking about players who play for. For uh, Bayern Munich, uh, which you said for for Parma, uh, the, the, all the big uh, clubs, but yeah, it was it was absolutely uh, amazing. And uh, yeah, you just mentioned it there as well. That was a special day. It was like the Orange Cup final. I had a lot of friends uh, over, and uh, of course uh, my family. And they were a little bit surprised. I heard it after uh, the game. They said, "Unbelievable, Arthur! There was more orange in the stadium than when you were playing for the national team of Holland." <laughs> why was that? I said it was a tribute to the Dutch, and of course I had to explain why they used it as an excuse. But uh, no, that was fantastic when you come out of the tunnel and I looked to the left, and uh, for me it was also special because I was captain, and uh, yeah, it's, it was brilliant. It was like the Orange Cup final. I was captain and. I still have the picture on my book when I was standing there in the in the middle circle and I was looking around me like I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was like a sea of orange, absolutely fantastic. And also, uh, we made history because we were also the first club in the world to win 100 trophies, and that made it really special. And that came of well because, like you remember, I think Rodney Wallace with a tackle, uh, he actually he broke the the jaw from uh, uh, from Jim Layton. And then there was a rule that only had three players, three ships on the bench. And yeah, as we know, uh, Aberdeen, they had no goalkeeper. So all of a sudden, I think the smallest player on the park, Robbie Winters, the striker, he became the goalkeeper. So we were all looking for what's happening here, by the way. But, uh, and I have to admit, uh, he, he, did, he did well. And, uh, but I knew as well, but in the moment when he became the goalkeeper, I thought, well, this is uh, Mission Impossible, but Aberdeen, we will, uh, will win the league. And yeah, that was, that was fantastic. Uh, the first year winning the treble, the second year winning the double. And I actually found it's quite funny that you uh, start talking about the, the second year because I still have this, like we can be, we could be heroes, like, <laughs> because they compared me with David Bowie, we could be heroes. And it was actually in the, in the season 2002. And it's quite funny when you actually, uh, when you keep it and then it brings back all the good memories uh, from the time and you think, oh, it's already 20 years ago. You think time is flying, but you always think back and you think, oh yeah, fantastic. Uh, winning trophies because that's what it's all about. That's what the supporters want to see. As, as a player, you want to win uh, the league, you want to win uh, the cup, and uh, and also trying to be successful uh, in Europe. And I think with the team we had, we could we could compete against every European team in Europe. We were, we were not afraid for the big ones. This may seem like a bit of a strange question to kind of ask you, and before we talk about what happened in the kind of next stage of under Advoca. How is it for you when the fans come to you and, and kind of say that you are one of the best left backs we've ever seen? Because I remember watching you in the World Cup in '98 and just thinking, my God, I've not seen a left back like this in so long. Mm -hmm. How was it 
when you come, does, is that a pressure for you? Was it a pressure for you or did you just revel and, and enjoy that kind of adulation from the support? Uh, no, it was not kind of uh, racing because yeah, you sign for a club, and uh, but I'm sure, uh, like you and, and Chris as well, when I signed for Rangers, I think 99% of the supporters they never heard about me. <laughs> they only found out because I played the World Cup, and uh, yeah, to be honest, we played well with Holland. Uh, yeah, we could have reached the final, and to be honest, I played a I played a decent uh, tournament, and uh, so that also helps when you come to a new club that the people they see you playing on a World Cup and uh, you have a decent World Cup there. Uh, but you know, you still, you still have to perform. But I know myself as a, as a player, I always want to give 100%. And of course, you can have a bad day, but at least you can say after the game, okay, I tried to do my best and I tried to do everything. And I think if supporters uh, see that you always give 100%, they can accept that you have a bad day. But And also, uh, yeah, it, it, for me, it was also... Uh, a strange experience because in Holland, when people see you on the street, they hardly approach you. But in Scotland, it's unbelievable. Uh, even in the beginning, because I moved to Hamilton, had a great time there. And even when I went to the to the Arsenal, to the supermarket, people they approach you. Hey, Arthur, come on! Especially when we played against Celtic, they approach you. Uh, they try to fire you up, and then you realize, whoa! I've signed for a club, and I came to a country where football is number one. And uh, and, and that makes it so special for, for all the foreigners when they came to Scotland because they think, hmm, the Scottish League, because I got slaughtered in Holland, uh, that I signed for Rangers and that I didn't go actually uh, go to Spain to sign for Atletico Madrid. And for me, it was then fantastic when we played with Rangers against PSV and we beat them in Eindhoven 1-0 and actually we, uh, we beat them at Ibrox 4-1. So all of a sudden, everybody was quiet and then they realized, whoa, yeah, Rangers, fantastic club. Uh, a good team, quality team, uh, great players. And uh, then they also realize yeah, how passionate the fans are. And that's something what, what no one will ever forget. And for you, it will be a surprise, but you have no idea how many people in, in Holland, they approach me if I can sort them out with tickets so they can actually come to Scotland to see, especially ranges uh, against the Celtic. Because, yeah, when Advocaat signed for Rangers, I signed for Rangers from Broncos later, uh, Mols, uh, De Boer, uh, Conteman. So a lot of the games from Rangers were also live on Dutch television, also the European games. So a lot of uh, the people that could see the atmosphere at Ibrox and yeah, then they realized that there's something special to, to go to Ibrox and experience it yourself. And yeah, but I say, even now when I arrive in, in, in Glasgow, yeah, the, 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 the people on the street, they approach you. And not only, I have to admit, not only the, the race supporters, but also a lot of Celtic supporters. Hi, Arthur, how are you doing? Blah, blah. Because, yeah, I played it for five years. After I retired, I stayed for another seven years in Scotland, so a total of 12 years, because I had a great time. I, I, I really uh, yeah, fell in love with the country, the people. And uh, every, every time when I go back to, uh, to Glasgow, it feels like coming home. It, it's, yeah. And also my daughters, they were born there, so... And at least they uh, they can pick up the Scottish language. I don't like that. <laughs> it's quite funny. <laughs> so, I hope that's not an yeah. impersonation of me there, Arthur. Huh? I hope that's not an impersonation of my Highland accent, Arthur. <laughs> Actually, yeah. I learned a little bit from you there when I, when I met you many years ago. That's right. <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll not talk about those hotel nights, Arthur. Um, <laughs> so moving on, and we get a treble, we get a double, and then things go sour pretty yeah. quickly under um, under Africa and I suppose it just shows you how quickly you can go from hero to, to kind of yeah. people wanting you out because that happened very quickly under under Dick and there was a obviously there was a season where we didn't win anything we got battered by Celtic and, and battered them at home as well but we didn't ultimately win anything and then there was another few months before um, Alex McLeish came in and before Alex came in what went wrong there, Arthur? You were obviously in the middle of it, and there was a lot yeah. of things said at the time um, about too many Dutch people and and things like that, and and animosity in the in the dressing room and that. Yeah. What? How did we go from beating Celtic four 0 and then within months getting beat six two and never recovering? How did that happen? And and what what's your thoughts looking back on that? Yeah, it was strange because, uh, like you said, you, you you win five trophies out of six, and I believe was there, but. Uh, I think also uh, Celtic, they, they changed it a little bit there as well. They appointed Martin O'Neill and uh, they were signing some, some good players with, with Hearts and um, they had Bobo Baldi, uh, they had Sutton, uh, Larson was there already. So I have to admit Celtic all of a sudden they, they had a, a good team as well. And uh, 
in, in our dressing room, the respect was always there. Of course, for 90 minutes, it was like a, like a battle, but the respect was there. But then all of a sudden, uh, yeah, they started to win uh, some games, and you could you could see a little bit in our dressing room. Uh, there was also a little bit, yeah. Dick was losing the, the, the dressing a little bit because, of course, Amaruso was first the captain. Then all of a sudden he appointed uh, Barry Ferguson, who did a fantastic job, uh, to be honest, as a captain. Uh, yeah, Amo was not quite happy with that. Uh, players actually uh, who came on the bench or even on the stand, they were not happy because they wanted to play. So all of a sudden you could you could feel that there was something, uh, yeah, wrong in the in the, in the dressing room. And, and and what you just said that as well. Then being successful the first two years, then all of a sudden you, you start to lose games. Uh, you lose the games against Celtic, and uh, yeah, that was something. Then coming out in the paper, then uh, the, the Dutch players, the Dutch connection got slaughtered, but that had nothing to do with it because the year before we also won uh, the trophies, and yeah, they, they tried to find a reason why, you know, because uh, Amorusa was not the captain anymore. Uh, then you had the competition on midfield, we had a great midfield with Amorusa, with, with Alberts, with, uh, with two guys. With from Broncos, with Ferguson, yeah, and then all of a sudden, yeah, some players that come on the bench are not quite happy. So the third season was was a disaster, and then actually we tried to actually focus on the fourth year again uh, by uh, by winning trophies. But in the beginning, also things were not actually going well, and then all of a sudden we came to a point. I think that was in uh, December uh, when we played against the Paris Saint Germain. Uh, there was nothing each at Ibrox, and then also uh, we played uh, we played them away. Nothing is there. They had a fantastic team with with Ronaldinho, with Arteta, and, and, and I have to admit we played we played really well. And uh, I went to extra time. Ronald de Boer he missed a penalty. I think he tried to hit uh, the Eiffel Tower. Unbelievable. <laughs> so eventually it came to to penalties, and uh, I had to take one as well. And I think there's still a picture when you can see me actually. Like, it was like a big relief. And then uh, yeah, we beat them, and it was fantastic because when I looked around me and. I always have so much respect for uh, the Rangers supporters because if we travel abroad, I was always surprised how many supporters were traveling everywhere. And even there in Paris, I think there were 10,000 uh, Rangers supporters. And I look around me and it was like one blue sea of, 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 of Rangers supporters. And yeah, it was like a big relief. And then immediately uh, yeah, we went back uh, to Scotland. And then the day after, uh, Dick Advocaat announced that he actually would st stay back. And then uh, Alice McLeese was uh, appointed as the new manager. So it came like, oh, nobody knew, nobody uh, could see it coming. And uh, yeah, that was the beginning of a new, actually, uh, era with, uh, with, uh, with Alex. And it was also, I think, the right moment as well, uh, because I think Dick also uh, noticed probably that, uh, that he had to, uh, to change something. He was more working at, uh, at the back, and Alex was actually now the, the new coach. And I still remember when Alex actually walked into the dressing room, uh, he said to me as well, he said, Arthur, I, said, I, I don't need to tell you how you have to kick a ball or how you have to play football. He said, but uh, I want to get uh, the spirit back in the, in the dressing room and uh, that we start to focus on, uh, on winning uh, trophies again. And, uh, but I think by that time in December, we were already, I think, 10 or 11 points behind Celtic. So I, I knew that it would be difficult to win the league again. But then we thought, okay, we focus on the League Cup and the, and the Scottish Cup and try to get the confidence back uh, in the dressing room. And actually, when, uh, when Alex took over, then very slowly, actually, you could see uh, the team were playing uh, some good football again. Uh, and, and Alex was more like a people manager, you know, he walked into the dressing room, talked to you, and, and then very slowly, uh, he cut the confidence back. And the most important game, what changed the whole season, was then the semi-final against uh, Celtic. <laughs> that, that, that was, to be honest, that was the most important game of the season because then all of a sudden, uh, with that fantastic call from Bert Konterman, that also, I think it was from 25 yards in the top corner. And uh, because Bert also got a lot of criticism and uh, slaughtered by the papers. But the moment when he scored the call against Celtic, that also changed everything for him as well and changed everything in the dressing room because from that moment on the belief was there we beat Celtic we won the League Cup and then also the Scottish Cup against uh, against Celtic yeah that was fantastic then uh, when we when we beat them and uh, that was the 3-2 the game and yeah then you could see boom, we are back on track and uh, we are here to win trophies again and then we thought to each other guys we won the double again and next year we go for the treble and uh, and Alex was uh, very important and what I said uh, that was the turning point when he took over after the Paris Saint-Germain game. 
quickly going to ask you on that. Um, we've obviously had Alex on, and we've asked him a very similar question. Bert's running up to hit that, Arthur. What's going through your head at that point? Oh, yeah. It was such a... I, I was happy for Bert that he scored a goal because, uh, boom, it, it changed everything for him as well, but also for the team. And uh, you can imagine, you could see the, the ball going into the top corner. I think we're not, we're not going to change him. We're not going to give this away again. And uh, you could see everybody was looking around him. You could see in each other's eyes, come on, guys, go for it. We're back. We're back on track. And uh, yeah, you can imagine then after the final whistle, uh, it was such uh, a relief. You can imagine uh, we were quite happy in the dressing room. And then we thought, guys, pff, there we are. Uh, Celtic, they maybe win the league, but that is the last trophy that will win in the next uh, two years. And uh, what I said, that call from bed, that changed everything. And uh, after that, pff, started to win trophies and prizes again. Did, did you have the belief going into that first full season under Alec that you know, the treble was possible? Did you think that that squad was good enough that Alec had the had the back of the change room? Obviously, like you won the two trophies and that's you back it in that winning groove, but to, yeah. England, to get England win the treble and especially to do it in such a remarkable fashion, uh, not quite, a, not quite a memorable season for you know, for so many reasons. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true, that's true because. Yeah, but I said it's always great when you, uh, when you when you beat your arch rivals, especially for the Scottish Cup. It's the last uh, game of the season because after then uh, you go away on holiday. And after we came back uh, and they start uh, pre-season, of course you're you're together in the dressing room and, and Alex said as well. He said, guys, I said I joined you only six months ago. I said I want two trophies out of two, and I said this year I want to win another three out of three. And he said, I'm not accepting anything less than that. So you could see already that he was up for it. The belief was there in the dressing room. Uh, we had, to be honest, we had a great squad of, of players. And uh, yeah, of course, the most important is that you go out and you start uh, to play the games and you start to win and uh, keep the pressure on your arts rivals. To be honest, we were only focusing on our own game and we said, focus on the game, start to win games, and then hopefully you hope that they start to, uh, to lose some points. And when we play against each other, yeah, then whoop, you have to make sure that, uh, that you're there. But, and, and, and I have to admit, if you, if you saw both teams, Rangers and Celtic, to be honest, Two fantastic teams. Uh, what I said, uh, I always respect for uh, for Celtic. Uh, they had a, a good squad of players, and also it's said enough that, uh, especially in that in that final season, they were full of con uh, confidence. I, I still remember. I think that was uh, probably in this January, February. Uh, I think they reached the quarterfinal from the, uh, from the Europa League, and they were full of confidence. Yeah, we can make history. We can win four trophies, and we were laughing in the dressing room. I said, uh, guys. We will win the treble and uh, and hopefully they will win all and uh, because yeah we had a good squad uh, we were full of confidence and what i said uh, there was a great atmosphere in the dressing room and we really had that belief that uh, that we could win the treble and we said to each other okay focus boom first we uh, start with the league the league cup boom you have to win that then the league and then the scottish cup but to be honest i think with five or six games to go, I think we were eight points ahead. But then all of a sudden, we were struggling for, 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 for two or three weeks. I uh, still remember uh, the game away against Dundee, when uh, Barry Ferguson uh, missed two penalties. And I think we got the third one and he wanted to get the ball. I think, Barry, if you fucking dare to take this penalty, I kick your ass. <laughs> so, uh, and then uh, we played also... Uh, I think home against Celtic when they beat us. So it came then to the final, yeah, to the final game with uh, with goal difference, and that's also a game I will never forget. I think <laughs> all the supporters, because uh, you could feel the tension on the on, on 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 the park, and because we didn't know what was happening there when they played against Kilmarnock, and all of a sudden we were, uh, yeah, uh, building up and yeah, a big roar, and I was actually Arthur. They just missed the penalty, go for it. And then, so especially the second half, you know, I, I always had the interaction with the supporters because, yeah, we didn't know, although we were actually, uh, uh, I think we were 4-1 up. You, yeah, we didn't know what was happening there. And um, yeah, but eventually when it came to uh, to the penalty uh, from uh, Miguel Arteta, when he scored a goal, I knew that we would win the league. But still, poof, it was the final whistle and we had to wait because they still had to play another two or three minutes. And then all of a sudden, we were waiting on the on the park, and I never forget. And all of a sudden, it was like yeah, a big roar in the stadium, and you can imagine the relief that we won the league again. That was the most important. And uh, uh, yeah, we won the league cup. We uh, we won the league, 
So yeah, it was a big party uh, in, in the dressing room. So yeah, big party in the stadium. The following day with the party, then I had also organized on a Tuesday evening a leaving party because it was for me it was the final season. So uh, I had uh, something organized in the Rotunda then. Uh, so we were partying for, for three, four days, and then all of a sudden we said, guys, on a, on a Wednesday, I hey, listen, we need to play the cup final, and we can make history. You can go in the treble. So we were partying for four days, and then yeah, on Thursday and Friday we were training and focusing on the on the cup final. And to be honest, I. I I can't actually remember the cup final because what, it was not a uh, very spectacular game. Uh, of course, we won uh, the game with 1-0. It was also Lorenzo Amoruso's uh, final game. It was my last game. And uh, he scored uh, the 1-0 with the header. And uh, it was fantastic. Uh, the last game of the season, you win the treble. The week before, uh, uh, you, uh, you win the league by only one goal difference. And for me, it was yeah, something special because I came to Rangers in 98. Uh, and of course, I won the treble and I knew in January that I would not extend my contract, but I was so focused uh, on, 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 on winning games. And I said to myself, how fantastic will it be if I leave after five years by winning the treble again? And then I think, hey, the circle is round then. Uh, by the time I thought I will extend uh, my career somewhere else. And it was strange because that game against Dundee, uh, the sponsor tenants, they made a special banner for me uh, from thank you for the memories with the big red tea. And I was holding it and that, yeah, that picture was in all the magazines, was in all the papers in, in Holland as well. And it's quite strange because uh, two months later, I thought to myself, you know what, I'm not going to play football anymore. I think I stop. And it's quite weird then if I hold the banner there on the park in my actually last game, thank you for the memories. Should be fake. I don't know. But I think it's a great finish of my career. My last two games, winning the league. Uh, winning the Scottish, uh, Scottish Cup final and winning the treble. So I think it's not a better moment actually to stop. And what I said, great memories, fantastic time. Can we bring it up to modern day, Arthur? What are you doing just now and how are you uh, passing your time whilst you're still involved in, in football and doing a bit of scouting? Yeah, yeah, that's right. But I said, when I uh, uh, retired in 2003, I stayed another uh, seven years in Scotland because what I said earlier on, uh, I had a great time there in Hamilton. Uh, I love Glasgow. I love the people. Uh, I think it's a great country, although it's, it's raining a lot, but okay, that aside. <laughs> but uh, then I actually moved back in 2010. And uh, for one year, I was a scout for Aston Villa. Uh, Alex McLeese asked me then uh, uh, to do the job for him. It was great. And then actually, uh, I went to Alkmaar, AZ Alkmaar, uh, to become a scout there. And I'm still working for them. So uh, I travel a lot. Uh, quite often, I go to Scandinavia. I watch a lot of games there try to find some young potential players because we are a small club and we always try to find some players with potential that we uh, buy for not so much money but hopefully we can sell for a lot of money and, and to be honest uh, yeah uh, this season we were actually quite uh, doing well we were on the same points with Ajax but uh, they had a better goal difference and that's why I, actually Ajax uh, yeah, uh, became the number one and we were the number two but uh, it's nice you're still involved. Uh, I like watching games in the stadium. I don't, I don't like watching games on television. I don't know what it is. Uh, I, I, I can hardly watch for 10 minutes, then I get bored. I get fed up. But in the stadium, I like the atmosphere uh, to watch the games there. And yeah, that's what I'm now doing uh, for, uh, yeah, for, uh, for Alkmaar for the last eight years. What can you tell the Rangers fans about Cedric Itten? You also went to, to scout him and went to watch him. For yeah. You, for him and were you pleased that he made the move to Rangers just a few weeks ago? Yeah, uh, it was quite funny because uh, some of the scouts from Alkmaar said, Arthur, give you, uh, did you give Rangers all the information about him because he signed for Glasgow Rangers? <laughs> but you know, I, uh, I saw him twice as well because we, we have some young, very good players like Bo Adu, he's a striker and he's on the list from all the top teams in Europe. So you also need to find yeah, some other players. And he was one of the players uh, who was on our list. And uh, then I thought, hey, he signed for Rangers. He's a, he's a player with a very good... Uh, Good mentality, 90 minutes, uh, he gives 100% uh, for the jersey and that's what the supporters want to see. And last year he was quite successful, scoring a lot of goals. He made his debut for the national team of Switzerland. He only played two games, but he also scored uh, three goals. And I think uh, Rangers, they maybe think that Morales will sign for another club. So that's maybe one of the reasons why they signed Itten as well. But I think if, uh, yeah, if he settled and he knows what it actually means when you go to Scotland and play for, for Rangers, when you play for the jersey, and hopefully the supporters can uh, can go to uh, yeah, to watch the games in the next couple of months. Then he realised that he signs for a fantastic club where he can uh, hopefully uh, 
be a successful uh, striker. And then he realized uh, that he signed for, uh, for a fantastic club. But, but I said, uh, he made a good impact on me. And I hope he's doing well for, uh, for Rangers. What, what kind of striker would you say he is? Is, is he a, a big, because the Rangers fans have maybe only seen him two or three times since he came here. Is he, is he a penalty box guy? Is he a guy that can drop deep in, and link up play? Can he play right across the front? Now, what's his main, his main areas? Yeah, he's, he's, he's dangerous uh, uh, around the box. Uh, also with his, uh, with his height, you know, he, uh, he, can, uh, he can be dangerous in the box, but especially the crosses uh, from the side. But uh, around the box, he tries to find uh, yeah, the space to come into position actually to uh, to hit the ball and I think that's why a lot of clubs were interested in him this season uh, because he was playing for St. Gollum together with another striker and, and, and both they had a very good relationship together. The other one he uh, signed for Freiburg for uh, three and a half million and, and hit and of course then I went to Rangers but uh, yeah he's dangerous uh, in and around the box and especially with, uh, with the football uh, we play on at Steven Gerrard with possession quite often on the half from the opponent. So uh, I think he can be an interesting uh, striker for the, for the club. Just finally from you, Arthur, can I get your thoughts on uh, Borna Barisic? He's, he's simply come on in, in the last couple of years. And what do you make of him as, as the modern Dave, Rangers left-back? Yeah, to be honest, I, I, I've not seen a lot of games, but uh, the games I, I've seen him playing, he's do, doing really well. Um, he's playing with confidence. Uh, he's a very important uh, player for... Uh, for uh, for Steven Gerrard uh, with his experience and um, I think especially the moment when he arrived, of course you yeah you have to find out about the, the pressure about the, the way to play. But I think he's doing really well and uh, I think also the last couple of games he, he was one of the, the the better players and uh, yeah you need that kind of players uh, your team he plays with confidence um, he's good with the players around him he's not afraid actually uh, to attack to come up. Uh, so uh, I, I like him uh, as, a, as a left fullback and he's a very good signing for, for Rangers. Arthur, we've had a great time talking to you about your career um, and it's, it's been a, a wonderful insight into your memories and obviously a wee bit recently about it and obviously in Borna there. But what yeah. I wanted to finally ask you about the reason we're here, obviously um, Four Lads of Dream has, has become an affiliate partner of Five Stars, which we're very yeah. excited about. What can you tell us about Five Stars for people that maybe don't know about it? How do we find you? Uh, what kind of events have you got coming up? Because obviously the world's still a wee bit uncertain to what, yeah. where we are, but uh, we're very excited to, to be in a partnership with yourself. So what can you tell everybody that's listening about yeah. Five Stars? Yeah, it, 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 what you say, it's a shame that uh, because of the coronavirus that yeah, a lot of uh, events are not uh, going, uh, going through. But uh, yeah, we you know, a team four for, for nearly a year and a half. And uh, we're organizing uh, a lot of events, Q&As. Uh, we, we have some fantastic players uh, with us, like with Laudrup, uh, Amoruso, uh, Jorg Alberts. Uh, we did uh, interviews with, uh, with Van Bronckhorst, with Ronald de Frank de Boer, uh, Jaap Stam. Uh, it's great because the players, they know that, uh, that we look after them and they always feel uh, happy to come to, to Scotland uh, to work for five stars. Uh, what I said, uh, the people are quite happy with, uh, with, with the events we organize. Uh, it, it, they really enjoy it. Uh, uh, what I said, uh, every time when we approach the players, they want to work together with us. And, and, and that makes it so special. Um, and uh, what I said, it's uh, the, the Q&As in, uh, in Scotland, but also we, uh, we, we want to go abroad and, uh, and organize events over there. And also now, uh, hopefully with the gym. Uh, did you try it already? <laughs> Uh, I, I, I can't, I can't comment. No, because it, it's great. We, 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 we just came out with, with some, some gin and the, the, the people, they love it. Uh, the, the Amoruso gin, uh, the Ian Durant, uh, the George Alves, uh, my gin. And it's fantastic that we, uh, that we can uh, hopefully work together with, uh, with, with, with Rangers. And, uh, and also what you said with, with the podcast, because they know if, if we uh, approach the, the players, they always want to, to work together with Five Stars because they're looked after. They know that we do a good job, and uh, yeah, and that's what you want. That uh, that the, the people are happy, that the players are happy, and uh, yeah, that makes it so special. And uh, and uh, what I said, it's great as well. Uh, yeah, uh, that I can talk to you with the podcast, and hopefully in the in the next couple of weeks you can get more ex players actually tells yeah their story, uh, what what it actually means to uh, to play for Rangers. And never in my dreams did I expect what I could expect to play for Rangers and what I said. And with five stars, yeah, uh, what I said, 
it's fantastic. Check it and uh, we can be quite successful with it. Yeah, absolutely. You can find five stars on Twitter, on Instagram, yeah. um, Facebook, and, and basically on social media everywhere. I would encourage everyone to go on, give them a follow. As I said, they've got some fantastic events coming up, like Check Graham Soonis. Loudrop's coming in, in February. Yeah. Um, we are very excited about seeing Brian. Um, and obviously, there's going to be a chance to see the likes of Chris Boyd, um, Ian Durant up in Inverness. Um, um, they're also going to my hometown in Fort William as well, which is um, right. um, which is you know quite strange because we never get people up there like that. So I might even have to go back home for that one. But yeah. um, as I said, check it out. And Arthur, finally, um, it's been an absolute privilege to talk to you. One of the finest players I've ever seen played for Rangers. We haven't even talked about your goal against Celtic, Arthur. That left foot rocket into the top corner, which was one of the most surprising things I'd ever seen because I didn't know that that, that was a possibility. And then away it went. But the memories <laughs> you gave us... the You trophies. didn't expect me to score a goal like that? Shocking. <laughs> <laughs> um, not at all. Not at all. Yeah. Um, right, before before I became a left fullback, I signed for PSV Eindhoven as a left winger and an attacking midfielder. You probably wouldn't believe that, but... <laughs> No, but what you say, but uh, I think to myself, if I score a goal, it should be against Celtic because then people will always remember it. If I had scored a goal against St. Johnston, you would not have remembered it probably. <laughs> Arthur, it's been an absolute privilege having you on and talking to you. Thank you so much. Yes, Matt. And I speak to you later throughout the year. All the best, guys. Thank, Thank you, Arthur. Bye. Chris, that was excellent. I had uh, a brilliant time talking to Arthur, all these memories um, coming back. And um, the good thing about talking to Arthur, he's obviously quite a funny guy as well. Um, a few moments in there with Barry Ferguson with the penalty and things like that. How how much did you enjoy hearing from him? No, he's always been one of the guys that if you ever pick up the phone, if you, if you get to a quiet morning and you're looking for a former Rangers player to, to, to try and phone for a, for a back page and a, and a spread inside, Arthur Newman's always one of the guys that's you know, really amenable, really great to talk to. He always picks up the phone, just loves talking about uh, talking about Rangers, clearly, clearly still has a great fondness uh, for the club, which is great to see. Um, and as, as we're saying with, you know, with the five star stuff, he got a chance to, to tell his stories to Rangers fans over the next uh, a couple of years. And as, as we're saying, there's, there's some great names in there as well. So, uh, really good to have him on uh, and just the uh, uh, first of many. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's a good point. We are. Thoroughly um, excited and grateful for the um, link up with Five Stars. We'll hopefully have some more players on. I think the next one we're due to speak to is Chris Boyd, which would, which is going to be great. Um, Chris was always a fantastic player, um, turning a great pundit as well. He's um, certainly he talks really highly of Rangers these days. But as we said um, with Arthur, um, encourage everybody to go onto Twitter, onto Facebook, Instagram, and type in Five Stars. And, and get them followed and, and keep up with our stuff. There's a lot of exciting news coming from them. We're delighted to be on board with them and we look forward to working with them in the future. A few good events coming up for us to go to as well, Chris. I would hope so. I think a couple of nights out there, that's always good. I've been to a few of these nights over the years and as I was saying, they do do a really good job. And when you have that calibre of names, it's not it's not hard to shift the tickets for it. Now, now the guys that have, they've got signed up and we look at the the titles that they've won and the cups that they've won and, and the records that they have with Rangers, uh, it's not you know, guys that have only played a few times for the cup, it's guys that have got a real okay stature about them. So I'm sure the fans will be desperate uh, to get back out there, get to these nights, see see and meet and get their pictures taken with some of these guys. Uh, and if we can get invite along, I certainly wouldn't say no. Absolutely. Um, so it's a huge thank you to Five Stars, as we said, go and check them out. Um, thank you again to co-host Mr Chris Jack for joining us. Chris, thank you. No problem at all. Great to be back. Looking forward to the next one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, before we go, a huge thank you to our friend Stuart Franklin over at Jersey. He's the one that edits this, makes us sound good, um, deletes all our mistakes and uh, sorts all that out. So we're very grateful. Thank you to him. Thank you to obviously the whole Jersey platform. It's a great uh, website. Go on and, and uh, share your views on Rangers and all the latest chat and everything on there. Um, thank you all to also to our sponsors, KGM Printing Services. They they are going great guns these days. They've they've got all sorts of partnerships with football clubs, Hibs, Derby, everything, making all sorts of stuff. So go and check them out on Twitter as well. Uh, we're also on Instagram, Four Lads Had a Dream. We're all, we're on Twitter, Four Lads Had a Dream, and hopefully um, it's going to be a good season ahead. Uh, yeah, there was a wee blip at the weekend, but pick yourself up, 
Kilmarnock on Saturday. We wish the players and the management all the best. So until the next time, ignore the nonsense, the irrelevant and the noise.